Hey guys, it's your girl Jay, and this is not a running video. So, um, I am actually here because today is October 1st. It is the beginning of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I am a breast cancer survivor. So, since I've been journal or er, documenting my running um, journey, there are several people who noticed, um, they kind of went back through my page and found that I had a cancer journey. That's the reason I started this particular page, was to document my cancer journey, which started back in 2016. So, of course, the people who inbox me, they know that I'm alive, of course, but they ask questions about kind of like where I am and, you know, what happened after. So... Again, I was diagnosed in 2016. I found a lump in my breast in July of 2016, right after my birthday. Um, I did decide to go get it checked out, of course. It did take some time, just scheduling. There was issues with the mammography facility that I was going in and getting my old records, this, that, and the other. Ended up being, I didn't get my mammogram a diagnostic mammogram until September I went in got the mammogram they did an ultrasound because the mammogram they saw something on it which we already knew because I felt found my lump did an ultrasound they found that some there was some enlarged lymph nodes as well which was concerning so um, they scheduled me for a biopsy I had my biopsy September 8th of 2016 and then September 14th of 2016, I got the results that I had breast cancer. I had triple negative breast cancer, which is a very aggressive form of breast cancer. Um, according to the medical arena, I'm young and uh, it tends to strike younger people and it tends to strike people, um, women of color more so than anyone, any other demographic. The other issue with the uh, triple negative breast cancer is African Americans and Latina Americans have a poor morta mortality rate and so they tend to not survive it um, at a greater rate than others. So I got my diagnosis on the 14th uh, of course they sent me, I got my oncology team I went to Houston Methodist is where I was treated so they set up my team there everyone was wonderful um, in the end of September because I was 40 I didn't have any children I still don't have children um, they went through a process of preserving my eggs so around this time in 2016 I was giving myself nightly injections in order to produce eggs that they could harvest at a later date. I ended up doing that, I think it was about 12 days of giving shots, two or three shots a night to up my hormones to produce these eggs, which they then harvested. And it was harvested right before I started chemo. Um, I ended up with 38 viable eggs that are frozen to this day. Don't know what I'm gonna do with those, but they're there. And then I had surgery for my port, which is the uh, place that they actually inject the chemo into your body. And then I had my, the eggs harvested like two days after my port surgery. And then at two days after that, I started chemo. Started chemo on October 10th of 2016. I was given adriamycin, which is what they call the red devil. It's a red chemo one of the strongest if not the strongest chemotherapy agent out there also with a, another medication called cytoxin I went to chemo every two weeks um, and I had four rounds of those two medications then I did I was set up for 12 weekly chemo sessions with medication called Taxol so just to catch you up to speed started on October 10th my hair fell out at the end of October 
and um, I didn't experience a lot of like vomiting or throwing up I did lose I think I lost I lost 10 pounds initially and it was just sort of trying to get figure out what I could eat because everything tasted horrible so I made it through chemo finished chemo on March 15th I was a little delayed because I did end up getting um, an infection and then at one point my blood cells my white were too low I was too sick for chemo so I should have finished on March 1st got pushed back finished on March 15th um, I got to ring the bell I want to say I was happy and of course I was but I was so literally exhausted from everything that my body had been put through over the course of those five what five and a half months five months or so and um, so I then rested my body I had to heal get some of the chemo flush it out of my system in order to have surgery so I went in for surgery on April 21st I was going in for what is a lumpectomy and lymph node dissection unfortunately the day that I went in my blood pressure was so high stroke level high they were unable to operate for fear that I would bleed out on the table or have a stroke super disappointing I wanted to be done because I had vacation coming up in May um, to see my best friends um, but it was pushed back so I was given blood pressure medication to get my blood pressure under control I finally got it under control and then I ended up having surgery on May 8th and surgery was a success they were able to go in found out that um, none of my lymph nodes had any remaining cancer and the lump that I had experienced had shrunken to nothing there was nothing but sort of dead tissue that um, the chemo had ravaged through the cancer cells um, I then recovered from the surgery at the end of May I was able to go on my vacation with my best friends we went to Florida my best friend is from the Bahamas so he came up I had a friend from New York and a friend from Detroit um, and we had a great time so after that I started on July 2nd I believe it was radiation therapy now although I had no cancer at the time uh, triple negative breast cancer is very precarious and it tends to have rogue cells that fly off to other parts that are undetectable so they like to do radiation so I had whole breast radiation 25 sessions which you go daily it only takes about 15 20 minutes but it's every day so um, I finished that and uh, radiation is like being in the Sun all day so if you've ever had time at the beach or whatever and you've been in the Sun all day um, you just feel wiped out so that's what ended up happening I was exhausted tired I would try to work out or most of the times I would succeed and then after that I would take two or three hour naps in the middle of the day and so I finished radiation on August 8th I rang another bell for that and that was pretty much the end of the journey now doubling back when I had um, been diagnosed with breast cancer I had a genetic test done those genetic markers came back that I had three genetic anomalies both of th all three of them indicating that I had a high likelihood of breast cancer which I already got and then a likelihood of um, uterine cancer or I'm sorry ovarian cancer so the other part of my treatment plan is that I needed to have a double mastectomy at some point they recommend between the age of 45 and 50 and then I would also need to have an ophorectomy removing of my ovaries at some time between 45 and 50 as well 
So um, I had my lung lumpectomy in May of 2017. I was not trying to have a double mastectomy. I'm like, I don't want to lose my boobs. I'm not ready for that. I'm too young. I didn't want to be flat. Didn't know. I, you know, heard of people having their surgery and the skin not surviving and just being a mess. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'll wait till I'm old. But through the time from when I finished, the thing about cancer is it kind of stays in the back of your mind constantly. So I literally was thinking about it every day. What if it came back? If it came back, I'm almost, I'm almost maxed out on radiation. I maxed out on some of the chemo drugs. Like what's going to happen? And with triple negative, we don't have very many options on what medications we can take. They're in development, but it's um, just limited. So you want to get it the first time. And I was scared um, constantly caused me high anxiety um, knowing that it could potentially come back. And I had a high likelihood of it coming back because of genetic factors and lifestyle factors. So um, it just kept weighing on me. So I decided before I turned 45 that I would have the double mastectomy with reconstruction. That brings us up to 2019, October 10th, which is crazy because October 10th of 2016 is when I started chemo, but October 10th of 2019 is when I had a double mastectomy with reconstruction, implant reconstruction. Um, surgery went well, uh, had no complications during the surgery. Um, I ended up having drains for eight weeks when the drains finally came out I was so happy because I couldn't work out and I like to work out um, I just couldn't I couldn't go anywhere I couldn't travel I couldn't do anything because who wants to travel with you know drains sticking out so it kind of put off a lot of things in my life so anyway I ended up having the surgery and eight weeks later, they took my last drain out, went home ecstatic. I'm like trying to figure out how to get to see one of my friends who is dealing with a different type of cancer. And I woke up two days later with, I didn't have a fever or anything, but I was leaking from the drain site a lot. It would not stop. So I called the doctor. They had me come in immediately. Come to find out, I had an infection within the breast pocket behind my implant. By the time I made it to the hospital, my doctor, I started feeling very sick. My fever had went up. I didn't even have a fever really when I went. I just knew something was wrong. But my fever had shot up to 104.7. And so they immediately scheduled me for surgery that night I got to my doctor's office at 4 30 I was in surgery at 6 o'clock um, so they had to replace the implant clean all of the infection out so now I have kind of new scars more drains more healing time so went home totally irritated um, I ended up taking another five weeks after the original eight weeks, almost six weeks to heal, got my drains out. And that brings us into, I had the second surgery December 5th. I was in the hospital for five and a half days on an IV drip of antibiotics. Then they sent me home with a pick line for another 14 days of antibiotics that I would just administer myself and then I went on another month and a half of oral antibiotics because they didn't want another infection did all of that and thought hey I'm gonna go on with my life but there are some issues with the reconstruction so now it is October 1st and I'm scheduled for 
scar revision and capsular contracture removal and lipo filling on October 20th of this year and hopefully that will be the last surgery that is linked to my breast cancer so that's where I am today 2020 um, 20 more days until my last surgery which should only if everything goes well I should only have to be out of work for two or three weeks two to four weeks um, and I'll be done and I will be excited because you know you have to do certain things to try to prevent the cancer from coming back. There's also things that are, you know, aesthetic. Um, you want to be made whole again. So that's the process I am right now. And, um, but I'm healthy, a little overweight, no signs of cancer. Um, I had my last checkup, do, 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 January. And I'm now up to yearly checkups. Um, which is basically I go in they ask me some questions have I had any signs and symptoms most of the time they don't even scan me so you have to become in tune with your body because when things start to feel different you need to check on that so that's where I am October 2020 and um, so that is the journey but the other part of this video I want to come in and tell you guys is that since it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I want all of the ladies who watch this, all of the fellas who watch it, have women in their life, make sure they schedule their mammograms and get checked out. Most insurance cover mammogram if you have a family history at almost any time in your life. If you don't have a family history, the majority of them will cover it at 35. In October, there are plenty of opportunities to get a mammogram for free if you don't have insurance or if you know someone who doesn't have insurance check around at the hospitals Google and you might be able to find some free options or low-cost options for mammograms on um, diagnostic mammograms and so that really isn't an excuse if you don't have insurance you still could be eligible and able to find a place in your area that offers it for free and it usually goes on through October and fellas you can get breast cancer as well so if you notice any kind of lumps um, in your chest area under your arms your clavicle any of those places breast cancer tends to start so you should also you know keep an eye rub your chest a little bit ladies you know rub rub your boobs check them do yourself breast exams monthly get to know your body so you know if something is wrong and um, if you guys could just do that, that would make me extremely happy. So for those of you who ask where I am, cancer journey, cancer free, living, trying to live my best life in this COVID situation. Um, and if you are going through cancer and you want more detailed information, you can either watch my other videos or you can inbox me like some of you have. And I will be happy to provide any information that might be helpful. I also have a blog which is called Postmark from C, like postmarked ed from C.com. And I have blogs about some of the processes and things that I went through um, on my cancer journey. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you all check yourself for cancer. Particularly, I'm talking about breast cancer, but overall, prostate cancer, colon cancer, all of the cancers. But some cancers are more preventable, and some cancers you can detect early. Like a breast cancer, like a colon cancer, like a prostate cancer. If things start feeling differently, if things start looking differently in any of those areas, Get yourself checked out. Colon cancer, they now have colon cancer tests that you can buy at the pharmacy anywhere from $25.99 upwards of $99.99.
um, that I seen um, at Walgreens and CVS so it's not an excuse if you don't want to go to the doctor and get a colonoscopy especially you fellas you know y'all be tripping about going to the doctor but those options are available um, and if they find any particular markers then you go to the doctor to make sure it's not cancer or to see you know what it may be so all in all that's it that is my PSA for the day and next video we'll be back to running talk to you soon take care of yourself